Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fan Dummies. I'm Greg. And I'm Aaron. Today, we're going to talk about season one of Lower Decks, Star Trek Lower Decks. We will review the entire season, rank all episodes from worst to best, and talk about the final episode and speculate on season two. If you're new to Fan Dummies, we talk about superhero, science fiction, and fantasy TV and movies every single week. You can listen to us on any podcast app or watch us on YouTube. Hit the subscribe, follow, listen now, whatever button. Press it. Join the Fan Dummy family. By the way, check out our latest YouTube video where we open all the Galaxy's Edge stuff we ordered from Shop Disney. All right. Good enough. <laughs> this is just a little nugget of what you're going to see. Ready to get into Lower Decks? Now I am. All you right. have to wait till the saber is turned off. Gary. Okay. <laughs> no more lightsabers. It's all about phasers. <sighs> it's phaser time, Aaron. Star Wars is fantasy. We're talking about science fiction. I just today. love the sound. <laughs> I'm putting it on the floor so I'm not enticed just to pick it up whenever. Good. We talked about Star Trek Lower Decks cast and episode one in our episode 94. If you want to get the basics of Lower Decks, check out that episode. It's a good one. We'll put the links in the show notes below. Now that we've seen the whole season twice, course we had to binge watch it before we did this podcast let's start off this episode with just a quick review Aaron. well i really love lower decks great review (laughs) nice job next segment (laughs) i just really loved all the characters as well i think they did a really great job casting the voice actors for all of the characters I especially liked Tindy and Rutherford's like dynamic together. I thought they were great. And I liked Mariner and Boimler's mm-hmm. relationship as well. I think it's just really cute. <laughs> the fact that all of these voice actors seem like they're really excited to be working on a Star Trek show as well. I thought that was pretty fun. Yeah. I mean, anytime we see them on like a panel or something, they really mm-hmm. seem geeked out uh-huh. to be uh-huh. playing a Star Trek <laughs> character. I'm just going to say love all the time in this segment. So I really love the animation of the show and being able to see the Star Trek Lower Decks world come to life in animation. I really love it. At first I was like, oh, it's just a 2D show. But I think they did a really great job with the animation on it. And it seems like the animation gets better and better as the season ends. They're adding more ships and they're adding more worlds and mm-hmm. I just love the way it looks. We need a love counter above you like mm-hmm. ding. Ding, ding, ding. I really love the Easter eggs and the callbacks that we get on the show. Mm -hmm. And I didn't notice them all watching through, but Mike McMahon has so many interviews online and a lot of them, I think, are on Twitter, Instagram. So you can go look these up. And he talks about Easter eggs from every episode, which I think is really fun. Yeah. Did you love that? Yes, I loved it. (laughs) (laughs) And they wouldn't just use Easter eggs or callbacks just so blatantly a lot of times it was in like more clever secret ways right and i really liked that as well so it wasn't you know just like right in your face there were a couple that were right in your face Mm -hmm. oh yeah a lot of them but there was a lot of them that they snuck in Mm -hmm. took a little bit more thought on those like in episode two when they misspelled welcome in Uh. klingon (laughs) only a real star trek nerd would decode the klingon and go hey that's not right great (laughs) <laughs> I didn't do it. I don't go that far. I fortunately or unfortunately, depending on what side of the fence you are, uh, do not know Klingon. Yeah. You can just tell that this show was created by Star Trek fans for Star Trek fans. And I really love that. <laughs> and I just cannot get the theme song out of my head. It has been in my head for the last couple of days since we've been binging it and mm-hmm. you know doing notes for this podcast. Do, 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 do. I'm not, oh, I'm not allowed to sing it. No. That's all you get. 
it's hard for me not to love everything Star Trek. Mm-hmm. I thought some of the writing could have been better, you know, if I'm just being honest. There were definitely episodes that stood out more than others. We're going to talk about all of the episodes in our next segment, which I think everyone will love. But some main call outs, Tawny Newsom as Beckett Mariner and Jack Quaid as Brad Boimler were the dream team. Mm -hmm. They did the absolute best of anyone on the show. I like Jack Quaid in Lower Decks more than I like him in The Boys. Oh, yeah. For sure. He kind of is the same character, though. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I hope he's not quitting Lower Decks to be in The Boys. I'd rather see him quit The Boys. Yes, me too. At first, the pacing in Rick and Morty style comedy was not my favorite. And I think I said something about that in our other episode where we talked about episode one. Mm -hmm. As the show went on, they toned it down a little bit. They slowed down the pacing a little bit and the writing got better as the series went on. It grew on me and I got to know the characters. Uh When Mariner's like sassing off, I was like, oh, that's funny. Instead of, oh my gosh, this person is really annoying. Yeah. (laughs) Which is how it started. All in all, I'd say eh, three and a half to four stars out of five. What do you think, Aaron? Three or four out of five? Barely four out of five. Like a barely, like right on the cusp of four. Yeah. 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 Like a 3.99 out of five. It's not the Mandalorian. No. Not by a long shot, but it's a different kind of show. But to me, nothing compares with the Mandalorian. So. That says a lot. Speaking of how some episodes were better than others, we are going to rank all episodes of Star Trek Lower Decks from worst to best. And I've decided the official name for this segment will be the top 10 out of 10 Star Trek Lower Decks episodes of all time. My, 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 my. Is that epic? So epic. So good. So good. We use all the most high-end tools for our voice work, (laughs) like all the reverbs. And Start us off, Aaron, at the bottom. Number 10, Terminal Provocations. In this episode, the Cerritos is in a standoff with the Drukmani over 100-year-old Starfleet salvage. This is the episode where Rutherford creates Badgie. Holodeck episodes are lame. The only redeeming quality this episode has is Badgie is used in episode 10 to create the Paclid virus. This episode is terrible. It's not good. I don't know how else to say it. Mike McMahon, sir, you can't show us a hundred year old Starfleet salvage vessel, claim there's goodies in the cargo, and then not show us what's in the box. I mean, that's just mean. It's just mean. I was angry. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Angry. That's why it's number 10. (laughs) Number nine, Crisis Point. Yet again, a holodeck episode. Uh Uh-oh. Boimler creates a replica of the crew using personal logs, and Mariner turns into a movie. Boimler did learn Captain Freeman is Mariner's mom, and hopefully Mariner worked out some of her anger issues, which I think are good. Let's just hope a less angry Mariner is still funny. Without those two plot points moving the story forward, this may have been number 10. I mean, this was darn near a Dixon Hill episode. Mm -hmm. I mean, just really bad. Number eight, Temporal Edict. This is the Buffer Time episode. Oh, the Buffer Time episode. Bormler lets slip to the captain what Buffer Time is. And this causes the captain to set a timer for every task to maximize efficiency. People start making mistakes, and they end up pissing off the people of Galeric 5. Yeah. They imprison the crew and try to take the crystals from the Cerritos. Give me your crystals. The only funny part about this episode was seeing Mariner swoon over Ransom. It was funny. The crystal people were really lame. Mm -hmm. Like, really lame. I don't remember in TNG, the next generation, or really any of the... Star Trek people they were visiting were just dumb. They had some sort of depth to them. Well, they weren't that dumb. They acted like they just wanted crystals and they were kind of barbaric with the fight, but they really had a lot of technology because they came into the Cerritos and was attacking them and they were pretty technical creatures. Yeah, I guess. It just kind of came out weird. It wasn't good. Now, 
we might sound salty about these episodes, but this is the bottom of the barrel, right? We're working our way up. Number seven, Veritas. The crew are thrown into an alien prison, interrogated and then threatened with boiling eels. This is basically a flashback episode, which is nearly as bad as a holodeck episode. Come on, man. That's three now episodes that are either a holodeck episode or a flashback episode. What makes this episode fun, though, is Tindy is the cleaner and really kicks butt when she was really just supposed to be the conference room cleaner. Uh And they misjudge what's going on. Of course, Ransom misjudges. Also, we get to see an old bird of prey and a Romulan warbird whenever their ships I geek out. Like Uh you put a new cool ship, you're not in number 10. Yeah. You've moved up on the list. (laughs) Oh, and it turns out this trial is really a party for the guy that they saved from the Romulans. Terrible. Terrible. Who was that guy up? Terrible. In the little box above. I'm just here to set up for a birthday party. (laughs) Number six, second contact. This is the first episode in Lower Decks of season one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's Tindy's first day on the Cerritos. There's also a zombie outbreak going on. It pretty much just gives us a tour of the ship and the characters and sets up the story for the season. Yeah. Both Tindy and Boimler were really cute in this episode. Uh They had some nice interactions, which I thought was fun. Yeah. This is the episode that made me fall in love with the characters. Mm -hmm. Did you ding that one? No, you, you'll ding it <laughs> ding in the post. Our podcast episode we did before on Lower Decks, we talk more in depth about this episode as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's middle of the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Number five, Envoys. Rutherford is trying out different job positions just so that you can hang out with Tendi, which is super cute. Mm-hmm. Part of the command staff, the medical staff, security personnel, really this seemed like they were just showing us the different jobs in Starfleet uh-huh. through Rutherford's eyes. Boimler and Mariner went to transport a Klingon, and of course it all goes wrong. Kind of the cool thing about this episode, though, which makes it a little bit better than the others, is on the planet where they take the Klingon, it's like Epcot uh-huh. of Star Trek. It is. Where there's like different little sections. All the different worlds of the Federation uh-huh. are shown. It's pretty neat. I liked the exploration of Star Trek in this episode. It was definitely better than Second Contact. This was episode two, I think. Yeah. uh Yeah. So it got better. Yeah. Which I thought was cool. Number four, much to do about Boimler. Ooh. In this episode, Tindy creates a dog, which I really liked. Yeah, it was cute. (laughs) But the dog isn't right. Well, she's never seen a dog. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. It's not like a real Earth dog. No. Also, the Cerritos has a visiting captain, which we find out was actually Mariner's friend from the past. Mm -hmm. She tries to promote Mariner in this episode, but Mariner is just not having it. The reason that this is titled Much to Do About Boimler is that Boimler gets stuck in phase mode from the transporter Mm -hmm. that Rutherford's working on. So he's supposed to be shipped off to the farm. And when you think of the farm, I mean, everybody kind of knows what that means. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to explain it. No. He thinks he's going to the farm. They're sending the dog there as well. And he gets on a ship. It's all dark and ominous. It's taking months to get to the farm. People on that ship that are going to the farm, they're all kind of Starfleet. Rejects. Rejects or yeah, yeah. something's happened to them while they're in Starfleet. Yeah. You know, they eventually think we're never going to get to the farm. And when they do get there, it's like paradise. <laughs> yeah. They were telling the truth about what the farm was. They were on the ship for so long. They're like, there is no farm. This is the farm. <laughs> it's a pretty good episode. Yeah. I like it a lot. I thought the Mariner storyline was really good. She took a dive when her friend tried to make her first officer. Uh huh. So she was messing up intentionally. And it was really funny. You get to see a little bit about Mariner and where she should be because her friends in the academy are already becoming captains. Oh, yeah. So she's an ensign. Uh Uh-huh. Towards the end of the episode, though, she does step up and you see how Mariner could act if Mm -hmm. she really tried, what she could accomplish. Throughout this whole season, you get little nuggets of Mariner as an awesome, Mm -hmm. 
officer. Number three, Cupid's errant arrow. Boimler has a girlfriend and she is out of his league. <laughs> Mariner's convinced that she is a parasite or something, which is pretty funny. Uh huh. Like, do you think Mariner is into Boimler? Sometimes I do, but other times I don't. Sometimes I think that there's something there, but other times I think they're just like brother and sister or close friend or whatever. Turns out Boimler had the parasite on the back of his head that made her attracted to him. Yeah. So there was a parasite involved. Remember they had a flashback when Mariner's friend got like mm-hmm. eaten or whatever from the, the alien species? Yeah. So, so she's paranoid because of that. Yeah. Mariner makes it a point to say like when a relationship is too good to be true, one of the people is a freaky alien, uh-huh. cyborg, salt vampire, something uh-huh. crazy. This is the episode where her old ship in that flashback is docked at Deep Space Nine, too. Yeah, yeah. This is a really good episode. It's really fun. Rutherford and Tendi almost get transferred to the Vancouver. Rutherford gets shot with a phaser by the person that's transferring him, and he gets his hand numbed, and it's hilarious. I always <laughs> wondered, like, if somebody gets stunned in their hand mm-hmm. what would happen and it's like your hand just is like <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was pretty fun number two moist vessel best name <laughs> for sure captain freeman and ransom they assign mariner the worst tasks on the cerrito in order to get mariner to transfer but mariner she doesn't care she makes all these bad tasks fun and she ends up getting promoted instead yeah which is her absolute Nightmare. Mm -hmm. And Boimler is so jealous, and he just doesn't understand why Mariner was promoted. I really like this episode because they show the day to day activities that the Starfleet officers have. Mm -hmm. They go to board meetings, they have talent nights, they play poker, and she gets her own room. Yeah, (laughs) she doesn't sleep in the hallway anymore. Uh -uh. It's really fun because one of the things that happened is Mariner goes all in on poker, Mm -hmm. and Shax is like, Whoa, what are you doing? This is a friendly game. This is a friendly game. And if you ever watch TNG, it's always friendly, but I'm pretty sure Riker has gone all in before on a couple of of hands, so it's not all friendly. Dr. Crusher was trying to get Riker and Jordy to shave their beard if she won. And if she lost, she was going to dye her hair brunette. What? (laughs) This happened? Uh Uh-huh. In real life? Yeah, in one of the episodes that we're going to talk about later here. Oh. Now, for the number one best episode of Star Trek Lower Decks of all time so far. No small parts. It's the best. I loved, ding, this episode. (laughs) It was suspenseful, action-packed. We got to see ship battles, finally. Mariner is getting special treatment because she's the captain's daughter, and it's hilarious. We get to see Peanut Hamper, which is an exocomp, which we'll talk about later. She is asked to save the day and decides not to. (laughs) So she transports off, which I think is how many people would react if Star Trek was real. Uh Right? I mean, she's like, "Ah, I only joined Starfleet to irritate my dad. I'm out. She didn't want their guts all over her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Rutherford and Shax end up saving the day. Riker and Deanna Troy swoop in with the Titan. It was super cool seeing the Titan show up. The ship looks way different than the Cerritos. Very, very cool. It's sleek. It's battle ready. You wouldn't want to mess with that. Like uh-uh. The Cerritos is like the grocery getter. Uh huh. And the Titan is like the Lamborghini. Yes. That's a good comparison right there. Yeah. It's like second contact with Whole Foods. (laughs) Before we get into the season finale and speculate about Lower Decks Season 2, we wanted to tell you about the Fandummies Patreon. For five bucks, I mean, that's a pumpkin spice latte price. For five bucks, you get a bunch of benefits. You get episodes early and ad-free. Sometimes you get exclusive segments, polls, and more. Tons of stuff. So much stuff, oodles of stuff, both audio and video, all in one membership. Go to patreon.com forward slash fan dummies. You can give us more than five bucks. Five bucks, just the minimum. You can give us $500. I mean, it's worth it. Totally worth it. 
Speaking of the best episode of Lower Decks, episode 10, No Small Parts, let's get into this finale. Let's dig into this sucker. Let's look under the covers. Let's see what's in there. The season finale was completely loaded with familiar, the next generation things. It started off amazing with the Cerritos crew, well, the officers, and then Mariner and Boiler. (laughs) down on beta three and talking about Landrew, the computer mm-hmm. that was telling people to like murder people during red hour. This is an original series callback essentially. And it's good. Apparently all the work that Kirk and Spock did during the first contact in the enterprise on the original show didn't stick. Yeah. Kirk came down, ripped his shirt, seduced some, Alien Beta 3 babe, <laughs> and then transported out, and they were back on Landrew. And Landrew's like, oh, they're gone. Yep. Time to get back to killing. That's right. Let's guess what time it is. The red hour. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> that was good. The Pecklins were a familiar thing as well. They're from a TNG episode from season two called Samaritan Snare. And the Packlids want the Enterprise tech, and they're destroying starships of all kinds and combining all the tech to make a super powerful ship. And they're still calling every starship in Starfleet the Enterprise. Yeah. They don't seem very smart. Somehow they're (laughs) kicking butt, though. Hello, Enterprise. Yeah. And they're super powerful. They were taking out these starships left and right. Yeah. We talked about Peanut Hamper, who is the exocomp that we saw in TNG. She visits this the Cerritos. Peanut Hamper is also a callback to a TNG episode from season six, episode nine, called The Quality of Life. Mm-hmm. And I saw in an interview that McMahon was excited to paint a Starfleet uniform on an exocomp. So he did it. Didn't somebody draw it on? Or is that considered paint? I guess it's just the color (laughs) animation. Turns out she's a real jerk and has a stupid name. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-huh. You have to watch the episode to get that. Because someone thinks that. I mean, we think that. I went back and watched some of that The Quality of Life episode. Mm -hmm. And that's the one with the poker playing at the beginning when they're waging, shaving off their beard. Yeah. Oh, So it's worth watching it for that. And then the exocomp in there. It doesn't have the same lifelike qualities as we sound lower decks, but yeah, it's pretty similar. And, and I mean, it's, for 1989 or 1990 or whenever that was. Yeah. But go watch it. It's a good one. Of course, the big reveal is Captain Riker and the Titan. The Titan shows up with Captain Riker and he's voiced by Jonathan Frakes, mm-hmm. as we all know. And Deanna Troy is voiced by Marina Sirtis. People might not know that. I think there's a lot of people who listen to our show that have not gone back and watched all the Star Trek TNG. Uh Uh-huh. And I think you'll still like Lower Decks. Oh, yeah. You just won't be able to catch some of these deeper Mm -hmm. things. But if you listen to this show, now you can go back to the exact episodes and watch them. Mm Mm-hmm. And you don't have to go back and watch the whole thing. Yeah, there weren't many old actors that came back to do Mm -mm. their voices. We saw Q, or we heard Q Mm -hmm. doing Q's voice. And then Al Riker and... Yeah, Deanna. Deanna, which is fun. Fun fact, the Titan has never been shown on screen, only talked about. In Nemesis, Riker and Troy transfer to the Titan. This happens after Data dies. Well, I guess we know he didn't really die. If you watch watch Picard. 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 (laughs) Also, Lower Decks takes place in 2380, and the transfer was in 2379. So Riker has only been captain for about a year, which is why he's still hot rodding it around the galaxy. Uh Uh-huh. He's like, pedal to the metal. He's like a totally different Riker. I love it. It's good. Uh-huh. Now that he doesn't have stodgy old Captain Picard holding him back, he can do his thing. Oh. Oh, pardon me, Captain. How are you today? <laughs> Earl Grey. Hot. And Riker really loves jazz, which I love. Ding. <laughs> I wonder if he likes snake jazz as well. Q clip.
That's a Rick and Morty reference. <laughs> a funny one, too. <laughs> Riker and Mariner know each other already. Of course they do. It really helps connect the show, though. It cracks me up when Mariner's like, oh, hey, Will. I mean, he's a captain. Uh-huh. <laughs> She's an ensign. And Boimler's like, you know Captain Riker? Oh, yeah. He's flush with the Romulan ale. And the, and That's where she gets all her contraband. All her contraband. And he's like, oh, oh, oh turn it off. And Deanna Troy's like, we are talking about this later. <laughs> it was super, super funny. One of my most favorite parts about this episode was the Next Generation theme song was playing while the Titans rescue the Cerritos. It was epic. Uh-huh. I don't understand how every episode couldn't be like this. To me, it could have been. There's uh-huh. so much material. Uh-huh. And you have to have a, what, a virus outbreak? A holodeck episodes? Yeah. A flashback episode? I mean, come on, man. Yeah. Well, I did see in an interview that Mike McMahon says that these last three episodes of the season, I think they're getting more into the flow and, you know, the writing and everything. Mm-hmm. And this is what we should expect out of season two. But if you look back at the last two episodes before this, they're the ones that we have at the top of our least favorite. Exactly. exactly. Which I'm a little nervous about. But based on this last episode, this episode just blew me away. We need TNG season three, Mike McMahon. Not season four. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or really five for that matter. But now there were also some very show changing events in this episode. Not to bring it down. Do, do, do. Shaq's sacrifices himself to save the Cerritos and to save Rutherford. Ooh. Yeah, Rutherford and Shax go and set a virus onto the Packled ship, and Badgie, holodeck creature, wrote the virus and explodes the ship right after Rutherford makes it off, and it's sad. Yeah. I can't believe they wrote Shax off. Mm-hmm. Shax has to rip off Rutherford's implant to keep the virus on the Packled ship. Mm-hmm. And this gives Rutherford his amnesia, which is sad because he doesn't remember Tindy. He's hot for Tindy. Oh, yeah. I it's mean, so sweet, though. He's always like, look at her. She's so cute. Uh-huh. I do get the sense that Rutherford likes everybody, though. I think he's got the hots for his boss, too. Remember the episode? Oh, where he wants to tell him something? Yeah, and then they go off together to live together in peace. That's the Holodeck Mariners yeah. movie episode. Yeah. I don't know if that's meant to be that you know Rutherford loves who he loves. Yeah, or- could be. Or if he just wants to nerd out forever. Yeah, yeah. It's unknown, but Rutherford is such a like a gentle soul. Uh huh. So fun to watch. He's in love with his engineering job on the Cerritos. Yeah. I mean, nothing really competes with that. Yeah. And then maybe the next level would be a person. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, but <laughs> Rutherford, I think he's a pretty complicated character. So I wouldn't just assume that he's going to end up with Tindy. Could be Ooh, someone new. You never I hope know. so. I like them. Me I too. ship them. Me too. So cute. Mariner and her mom, Captain Freeman, agree to work together and support each other. I think this is going to be fun. I really think Mariner needs to step it up. She needs a command post. Yeah. She needs, needs to be on the dang bridge, but then it's no longer lower decks. Speaking of the next bullet here, <laughs> Boimler gets promoted and transferred to the Titan. And Mariner is not happy about it at all. No, she's blown up his phone thing. Pad. But it just seems like he just left anyway. So it's probably his fault too for not acknowledging. And he was all like, oh, we can't get transferred. You know, I'll miss you. Yeah, you're my best friend. Yeah. Oh, wait. The Titan. Yeah, that's like his dream job though. Yeah. Can't really blame him too much. You have much. to take the dream job. Uh-huh. Even though if you're friends, you leave behind. All right, this has been fun. Before we wrap up this episode, let's just have a quick chat about what's going on in season two. What do we know so far for season two? Well, there is going to be a season two. Yes. Apparently back in 2018, two seasons were ordered. So we knew this right away. Yeah, it's great. During a Lower Decks panel at New York Comic Con 2020, which is not too long ago, with special guest... Jonathan Frakes. McMahon said that season two will pick up on the Titan 
with Boimler under the command of Captain Riker, and that Captain Riker will appear in at least the first episode of season two. I'm pumped about that. Can you see me smiling? Yeah, I'm pumped. (laughs) The funny part is that McMahon has a cat named Riker, so now he gets to write for Riker's character. Mm -hmm. I think it just blows Mike McMahon's mind. Do you think he tests the writing out on his cat? I hope so. He says like, Do you like jazz? Warp five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Did you like that, Riker? Yeah? No. Yeah. He liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Mike McMahon ever thought that he would ever meet Jonathan Franks or write for Riker ever. Like ever, ever, ever. No. He told a story on this panel where he saw Jonathan Franks in the airport and he just yelled, Franks! And then turned around in the airport embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> and his wife was there too, which cracks me up. And then who said it? Tawny? Who was, who was with him that said it? It's like, did you just ding dong ditch Jonathan Franks? Yeah, it might have been Tawny. I can't remember who it was, but it was so <laughs> funny. We'll put a link to that in the show notes so you can check it out. Or just Google NYCC Lower Decks and it'll come up. Yeah, that's a really fun panel to watch. A lot of times these Comic-Con panels, the actors, they just don't seem too excited to be there. Yeah. And this panel, they're very entertaining. Yeah, it doesn't sound like Deanna Troy will be back, though. We haven't heard any of that. So far, she's not set to be back. I like that a lot. I thought they drew her really cute. Uh Uh-huh. Like, they got the size right between Riker and Troy. Like, he's real tall and she's kind of short. Her hair was really cute. Like, they did a nice job on drawing both of them. Yeah, like her eyes... Like her, is it the pupils yeah. and the iris or whatever? It was like supposed to be bigger. Yeah, she's not human. On her, the show, like she's a beta zoe. Yeah, exactly. She's not human. And they have a new chief of security that McMahon is excited for us to see. He says the person who will be heading security will be somebody that fans are really interested in. Ooh. I wonder who that's going to be. Speaking of speculation, let's get into some speculation. Let's wrap this episode up with some information that is completely probably untrue that we have no inside source but pretend like we do yeah it's fun to speculate everybody welcome java dog to the podcast hey java dog (laughs) mcmahon's comments about the fans being interested in the new security chief are super fun who do you think it's going to be i honestly don't think it will be anyone that would be really high ranking even though that's a pretty high ranking station Mm mm-hmm I think it's probably going to be somebody from Voyager. We haven't had much Voyager representation. And I'm betting it's going to be Belana Torres, played by Roxanne Dawson. Or perhaps Tom Paris, who's played by Robert Duncan McNeil. By the way, Voyager just made it back to Earth. It's right about the time, I think it's been a maybe a year or so, they'll be debriefed and they'll be ready to get new ship assignments. So I think the timing just works out perfectly that they'll start filtering them in and they're not going to put an ex McKee criminal Mm -hmm. on a very high end ship. The Cerritos is perfect for Bolana Torres, at least to get back into Starfleet and and all that. seems like if you made it back on Voyager, you'd just be like, I'm done with Starfleet, staying on Earth. Or you really love it and you want to go back out. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, who knows? What about Mariner? Is she going to have a new buddy or coworker to replace Boimler? This is a tough one. I really think Jack Quaid is done with Lower Decks. Unfortunately, Mariner is going to have to move on. I hope not, though. I don't have any insider information. It's just my gut feeling after mm-hmm. hearing like the way McMahon and Quaid talk mm-hmm. on these panels. Yeah. It seems like thanks for a job well done more so than it's can't wait to see what you're going to do in the next season. I sure hope he doesn't leave. Hopefully Boim Boim comes back, (laughs) but maybe it'll be her and Ransom because now she's the captain's BFF again. Yeah. Her and Ransom are going to team up because now he knows and he's butt kisser. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So, and they definitely like each other because like one of the very last things Ransom says to her at the very end is like, man, that's hot. No. (laughs) Remember? Uh Uh-huh. Will Boimler last on the Titan or get transferred back to the Cerritos? What do you think his life is going to be like now? I think he's going to just live happily ever after on the Titan. I don't think they're going to show the Titan much and maybe we'll get to see cameos from, you know, maybe now and again. 
The other thing I was thinking is, what's Wesley Crusher up to? I need to look back at canon of TNG. I can't remember what he ended up getting to. It'd be cool to see actual Wesley Crusher again yeah. on the show. It totally could do it because Will Wheaton does the ready room. For sure. He's ready to work, I'm uh-huh. sure. <laughs> he's probably dying to be on the show too. Yeah. Like he's like, I'm in TNG. I'm still an actor. Yeah. I <laughs> act. Look at me. <laughs> Now that Mariner and her mother are respectful to each other, will Mariner get a promotion and be proud of it? What do you think is going to happen with their relationship? I hope McMahon doesn't revert back to the old ways. I do think that it's time for Mariner and the captain to get along a little better. And if Mariner is going to be used for like covert breaking of the rules, Uh I think it'll be really fun. Yeah, like, so the mom will be the hardcore Mm -hmm. to the books and Mariner will be the one that breaks the rules so they can actually get the jobs done. Exactly. I think that'll be fun. Yeah, I guess we did see that in an episode or two, them Mm -hmm. working together like that. What do you think is going to happen with Rutherford now that he has lost his memory? It's really a weird thing because he's still on the Cerritos and it still seems like he's working normally. I think he's just going to go back to work. I don't think they're going to make a big deal about it. He's probably still a great engineer. That's my thoughts anyway. Yeah. So before we wrap this up, are there any final thoughts on Lower Decks? I hope that Riker gets his own spinoff show. The Titan ship was super awesome and Riker was super funny. It just blew me away. I wasn't expecting myself to like this as much as I did. Like, I'm usually like, oh, let's go into the future. Let's have some new characters, new yeah. stories, new tech. And when they brought Riker and Deanna back on the Titan, I was just like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird why they never made a Riker spinoff anyway. It seems yeah. like the next logical Star Trek to make. Deanna Troy a requirement? That she's there? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I think, think so if Riker too. is there, I think that she should be there as well because yeah. we know that they end up together because of Picard. I, like I mean, that, they're still uh, together, so. I like that, um, you know, that husband and wife playfulness. Uh-huh. I think it's really cute <laughs> and it's fun to watch. Uh-huh. I'd watch that. If they made it, I'd watch it. Yeah, totally. Thank you for listening to this episode of Fan Dummies. Please subscribe, rate, and write us a review if you haven't already. We love five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts. As always, links to our Patreon, our Facebook group, and our merch store will be in the show notes below. If you want to reach out to us, we are at Fan Dummies on all social media. We will reply. Send us a note. Say hello. And thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.